Okay, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to find the quadratic function that has a vertex 2, 5 and passes through the point 4, negative 3. Anytime you are given the vertex and a point, that tells you when you want to use the vertex form of an equation, which is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, um, where h and k represent the vertex. So basically all we are going to do is we don't know what a is. a is our missing value, so in order to come up with the function that passes through these points, um, I have to plug in all the values that we know. We know an x coordinate and an f of x coordinate, that's the 4 and the negative 3. So this is my x coordinate and this is my f of x coordinate. So I'm going to go ahead and replace those in there. So I'm going to replace the x with 3. Sorry, I'm going to replace the x with 4 and the f of x with negative 3. The other thing that we already know is we know h and k. 2 is going to be the h and 5 is going to be the k. So if I replace my h with 2 and my k with 5 and the rest just stays the same. I have to have the squared and I have to have the a term. So what we're going to do first is we are going to find a. So that's our goal is to find a. So I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to have negative 3 equals a and this part right here if we simplify becomes 2 squared plus 5, and I'm going to do two steps at the same time on this one. I'm going to bring the 5 to the opposite side. This would cancel out and give me negative 8, and 2 squared would give me 4a. So if I simplify, we can see that a ends up being negative 2, because negative 8 divided by positive 4 is a negative 2. So now we have enough information to come up with our equation. And depending upon which format they ask you to do it in, um, if they ask for vertex form, you would just leave it. After you plug it back in, we would just simply go back and replace the f of x equals, and we're going to replace a with the negative 2. And the x minus our h was 2 plus our k which was 5. So this would be the answer if they asked for it in vertex form. Um, it's kind of confusing to me because the textbook that I currently teach from calls this the standard form and I have always heard it the vertex form. Um, so I'm going to use vertex form for this but look at your textbook to see if they call it something different. Um, if it asks you to simplify the answer, that means that they want you to expand it out and put it in the general form or what I have also heard in other textbooks, the standard form. So it's very confusing when different textbooks use different terminology. Um, so just look at your textbooks to refer to what they call it. So remember that this part right here, the x minus 2 squared, that means that I have to take, so if I come over here, x minus 2 squared really means x minus 2 minus x times x minus 2. Don't forget to expand this fully because I have a lot of people that make a mistake with this part right here. A lot of students that I teach will only square the x and only square the negative 2. They forget about the middle term that's found by doing the outside and the inside. The shortcut is the middle term is always twice the product, so this would be negative 4x. And then if I square the negative 2, it's plus 4. And then we would still have the plus 5 on the outside. Now what we need to do is we need to simplify by distributing the negative 2 into everything in the parentheses, not to the 5 on the outside. So we would have f of x equals negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 4, um, sorry. Negative 2 times negative 4 would give me positive 8x. Negative 2 times 4, I looked at the wrong spot on my paper and confused myself for a second. Sorry about that. Negative 2 times 4 would give me negative 8 plus 5. And if we simplify completely, we end up with f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 3. 
And this would be our final answer in simplified form. Um, like I said, depending upon your textbook, most of the time, most textbooks that I have um, taught from have called this standard form. Um, it's also known as general form. Um, so again, I'm not trying to cause confusion. It confuses me that different textbooks use different names. Um, but this is general form or standard form for a lot of textbooks. So right now the textbook that I teach from calls this the general form and this the standard form. Every other textbook I've ever taught from calls this vertex form and this standard form. So just look at your textbook and see which one it is for you. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, if there are other topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.